The Kraft Music Hall with Bing Crosby, Victor Borges, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, the music maids in Hal, and the charioteers. Bing's distinguished visitors for this evening include Miss Ginny Sims, star of RKO Pictures, Edgar Buchanan, who won much favorable comment as the dentist in the film Texas, Edward Brophy, the voice of Timothy Mouse in Dumbo, Mrs. Vicente Lim of the Philippine Islands, and Mrs. Dolores Garcia Schober, who helps build the A-31 dive bombers. And here with the charioteers is Bing Crosby. Into position. Praise the Lord. Can't afford to sit around the wishing. Praise the Lord. We're all between tradition and the deep blue sea. Yes, the sky pilot said it. You got to give him credit for a son of a gun of a gunner was he. Shout and praise the Lord. We're on a mighty mission. All aboard. Not a golden station. Praise the Lord. Pass the ammunition and we'll all stay free. by shortwave to battle stations all over the world, including a few new strong points. While the Marines are holding on the Solomons and the Army and Navy are consolidating North African positions, let's never forget that wonderful and heartbreaking fight put up by a small group of brave men in the Philippine Islands. Let's remember those men on Platan and Corregidor, particularly between now and next Sunday, the seventh anniversary of the Philippine Commonwealth Government. In honor of the anniversary, we asked a representative of the Philippine people to join us in the hall this evening. On January 29th, in sending the first shortwave broadcast to battle stations at the request of General MacArthur on Bataan, we addressed ourselves specifically to General MacArthur, Colonel Aiken, and three gallant Filipino generals, General Valdez, General Francisco, and General Lim. I only mention this because our representative from the Philippines this evening is Mrs. Lim. Thank you very much, Bing. And when I say you, I mean I mean the American people to whom we the Filipinos owe so much. I don't know why you should feel that you owe us anything, Mrs. Lee. Oh, because with the founding of the Commonwealth government in the Philippines, President Roosevelt made good President McKinley's promise and actually brought to my people and my country the four freedoms which we are all fighting now to preserve. Do you have any idea where General Lim is, Mrs. Lim? There are so many conflicting reports, Bing, 
about him that I choose only to hope and pray that he is alive. But that e- wherever he may be, God bless him and all his men, that they may keep faith that victory will finally come. I understand that you have children in the United States Armed Forces. Yes. One son who graduated from Annapolis is now a lieutenant in the Army Air Corps. Annapolis and he's in the Army Air Corps? Yes. But that's a very long story. It must be. (laughs) Well, I have another son who will graduate from West Point in 1944, just 30 years after his father graduated from the Point. And my eldest son graduated from MIT and is now a Master of Chemical Engineering with the Northrop Aircraft Company. Oh, yeah. Three children, huh? Six. Tops me. <laughs> I have two girls. Two girls? Uh, tops me about two. <laughs> and I have a foster boy who is still in the Boy Scout age. Well, to go back for a moment, Mrs. Lim, you said that the United States had actually brought the four freedoms to the Philippines. What way? By making possible the establishment of the Commonwealth government, which is truly a government by and for the common man, by ignoring all prejudices, by giving to the Filipinos a country, a national honor, and a flag for which to fight side by side with the United States so that we may both preserve the liberty for which we have fought and which we both so dearly love. Thank you, Mrs. Lee. It's been a great pleasure to be here with you, Bing, tonight. I consider it a great privilege to be able to celebrate the anniversary of our Commonwealth that is now so shrouded in darkness, but which I know will be brightened with freedom because with the American soldiers and the American sailors and the American Marines walk all over the world, there will be nothing before them but victory. haven't been too heavy in this program. Sorry. Too heavy for the show? Oh, you forget we featured John Scott Trotter. <laughs> well, whoever Mr. Trotter was, he'd be a feature. I think uh, you might find him more in the background, as Jenny Sims sings, though. Two artists such as Miss Sims and Mr. Trotter complement each other. Neither is ever in the background. That's true, that's true. And here are Mr. Trotter, Miss Sims, and Song. Thank you very much. Man alive, here comes Mr. Five by Five. One of those big fat Belton boys, solid habit of poise. Mr. Five by Five, five feet tall and he's five feet wide. He don't measure no more from head to toe than he do from side to side. Mr. Five by Five, fifteen chins and a line of jive. He's a mellow old cat, a real head fat. Be Mr. Five by Five. That man can really jump it for that man. The only trouble is there's no way of knowing whether he's coming on or going. Mr. Five by Five, slightly plump on the solid side. He don't shake it no more from head to toe than he do from side to side. Man alive, there goes Mr. Five Five Five. Very sprightly, Jenny, and thanks. Such clients of ours as saw the comedy. Larceny Incorporated must remember the larcenist luggage merchant, Ed Brophy. Comedian Ed Brophy also lingers in the memory as the voice of the lovable Timothy Mouse in Walt Disney's Dumbo. 
In his latest picture, the Howard Hawks film Air Force, Ed Doubles. He's seen and heard. What's next on the schedule, Eddie? Oh, I got me a great idea for a racket thing, and I'm going to declare you in. Well, lay it upon me. Is this racket on the up and up? Oh, sure. Oh, you don't think I'd put you in on a hot spot, do you? Oh, I think I love you like a brother. I love you even better than my own brother. My brother's a bum. <laughs> Sometimes happens. Come in with me on this thing, thing, and you'll be able to stop crooning. Huh? Think of it. You'll be all through boo boo booing. <laughs> when I'm through boo boo booing, what'll I be do 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 doing? <laughs> I can see you now, standing there in the store. Already we got a store yet. You're all dressed up with striped pants and a frock coat. And you got on a collar and a tie. And you're wearing a carnation. You see me in that outfit? Some imagination, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you're tall, brother. <laughs> what kind of a store have we got? Oh, Bing, uh, promise you won't tell none of the mob. They call me a sissy. You see, I got me a lady's dress shop. What? Uh, Lingery, hosiery, millinery, and jewelry. Oh, no. Where is this Durndle dive, Ed? Right over here. Ain't it swell? Look at the sign. Maison de Brophy's Modiste and Swing Shift Shoppy. Come on, Ed. Grand, grand. Hmm, yes, rather nice. Nice spot. I'll just look around. Maybe I can find something to buy for Christmas. You got any suggestions? Oh, sure. Over on the first counter, there's novelties, perfume, overalls, and lamp shops. Second counter, lingery, hosiery, and lamb chops. Third counter, suits, handkerchiefs, and lamb chops. You got lamb chops at every counter? No, that's what I got to take home for dinner, and I don't want to forget it. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're a merchant prince if I ever saw one. Say, Ed, I might take a hat home to my sister. What's the latest thing? What are they wearing? Look at this. Ain't it cute? Go on, try it on, Bill. Oh, no, I don't. Nobody will see it. Oh, somebody will peek in and... It's the latest pancake model. Yes, it is rather nice. Isn't it? <laughs> Love it. But the syrup keeps dripping in my face. <laughs> Quiet, Bing. Here comes a customer. Hiya, Tubby. Good evening, you all. Good evening, all of you. <laughs> I want to get my cousin Wanda a dress for Christmas. What size is your cousin Wanda? She's about my size, and I'd like to get her something real dainty with ruffles. Hey, Bing. Help me out with this project. He wants a dress for his cousin Wanda, who's the same size as he is, with ruffles. <laughs> well, now we'll have to measure you in order to determine the correct size. Mr. Brophy, will you hold the other end of the tape measure, please? Just put it around the gentleman's waistline. That's it. Keep going now. Keep going. More. A little more. Eddie, where are you? Eddie, where are you? I'm here on the other side. <laughs> Fine, keep sending up flares, huh? <laughs> what measurements did you get? Three and a half. Three and a half feet? No, tape measures. <laughs> I think your cousin Wanda needs a barrage balloon. Oh, I think he's hurt. If he's hurt all over, he's in agony. <laughs> Put down a cigar. Here comes a swell-looking babe. Holy smokes, it's Jimmy Sims. Now we make a sale. I'll put the dog on ticket. You help me out. <laughs> How are you, sister? Hey, kid. Anybody ever tell you you was a cute bundle of fluff? What can I do for you? Oh, I think I'd like a chapeau. Oh, sure. Did you say a chap... Uh, a chapeau? Yes, that's right. A chapeau. Uh, just a second. I'll call me assistant. Uh, hey, Bing, the babe wants a shampoo. Oh. <laughs> well, of course, just step right over here to the hairdressing department. What type of shampoo do you like? I want a chapeau, not a shampoo. Oh, of course, of course, of course, course. Mr. Brophy, the lady wants a chapeau. What's a chapeau? I think it's French for something that we ain't never heard of. <laughs> uh, pardon me, lady. Uh, what do you have in mind in chapeaux? Oh, well, uh, have you something nice in a strawberry? Well, strawberries are nice and cream and sugar. <laughs> uh, maybe we should give her a raspberry. This is disgusting. I came in here to get a chapeau, and I want to see some at once. Don't be impatient, lady. We'll get you a chapeau. While you're waiting, why don't you just try on some hats? I've never seen such a store. I'm disgusted. I'll never come in here again as long as I live. I'll tell all of my friends the same thing. Well, Bing, would you like to buy a piece of malingery business? <laughs> a little too feminine for me, Eddie. I'd rather sake my dough into something more masculine, like... You know, maybe the luggage business. You like luggage better than lingerie? Yeah, but I'll come to see you if I need any lingerie. Thanks. I'll come to see you if I need any trunks. Check with me. <laughs> I 
As Edward Brophy prepares to desert the lingerie, the, what is it, lingerie, Raquette, we go from unmentionables to something meriting considerable mention, the charioteer's arrangement of rows of trolley. Yes, please, ma'am. Charioteers are going to be back later with another interesting arrangement.
That there was Moonlight Becomes You. It's a song from the, uh, from the Bob Hope picture, Road to Morocco, which leads directly to Victor Borgay. <laughs> How things going, uh, Dick? Nice. Dick? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. A little dialogue. Yeah, I didn't know this. <laughs> This uh, gas rationing is going to make it very difficult to get around. Oh, it's going to be rugged. Oh, very rough. rough. Oh, as a matter of fact, I think it'll change the whole picture out here in the West. Can you imagine those cowboys running around with four gallon hats? Shut <laughs> <laughs> down. <laughs> but uh, the gas ration won't bother me at all because I put my car up for the duration. Put your car up? Yes. Huh? But I didn't waste anything. I took the car apart and used all the parts around the house. Now uh, we use the carburetor as a toaster. Wonderful. <laughs> we get four pieces of toast to a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> and we put the fog light in the kitchen. You put the fog light in the kitchen? Why? You should see that kitchen when my wife makes toast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we always need a thing like that. Bing, huh? it's amazing how uh, the parts from my car fit in around the house. Working out all right, huh? Oh, wonderful. It's a wonderful. After dinner, you know, peacefully, I'm sitting in front of the fireplace in the rumble seat, <laughs> <laughs> reading my driver's license, <laughs> smoking the exhaust pipe, <laughs> and blowing piston rings. <laughs> Another thing, you know how difficult it is to get house help nowadays. Oh. So instead of cleaning our house, we just lubricated every thousand guests. <laughs> <laughs> it's done a lot of good, especially to my mother-in-law. Huh? Ever since I put the rearview mirror in her dressing room, she never wears slacks anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Raise me. Uh, by the way, my brother, you you know my brother, Bing, don't you? What's his name? Uh, Smorgas Borger. Oh, Smorgas. Oh, old Smorgas. Yes. Yeah, right. Hey, boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice boy. He had his girlfriend over last night, and they got a $5 fine for double parking in the sofa. <laughs> but, yeah, but I must have made a few mistakes. Quite natural, your brother. Yeah. Sure. You know, I've got a couple of wires crossed. Uh, anytime someone presses a button on the front door bell... The whole roof rolls back automatically. Cozy. Yeah, another mistake was when I put the reverse gear in the cuckoo clock. You know, the little bird used to come out and yow and say, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. But since I put the reverse gear in it, it just backs out and says, hey, buddy, what time is it? <laughs> <clears throat> That's only one thing I can't find a use for. That's the spark clock. They were so old and worn out that I don't know what to do with them. Well, throw them out. Who wants to hang on to a bunch of broken down plugs? Are you kidding? <laughs> Not you, too. You gotta come from Denmark to hit me with that, huh? Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, there's only one really bad feature about the whole thing, Bing. Okay. Anytime someone blows a police whistle, my house pulls over to the curb and starts explaining. <laughs> It also affects my piano playing. Oh, we can't have that. Oh, yes, but it does. You know, oh, since yeah. I put the automobile pedals on the piano, you know, the brake and the yeah. clutch, you know, every time I play, something different comes out. For instance, uh, I try to play my devotion. What happened? I just got to... My, 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 I had the brake on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I play, for instance, William Tell, it goes like this. Oh, I have to play like this. Thirty-five uh, past an hour, you know. <laughs> and uh, when I play this tune here, it goes a little different. It's a bumpy road, you know. Bumpy road. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I played night and day. You know, that's a beautiful tune. Night and day. You know how that comes out. Uh. You 
know how I, how I finish every little piece of music I play? Huh. <laughs> Spike Jones will see Well, thank you very much, Vic. There's certainly a lot of good, solid advice there for folks who may have to convert the sedan into a greenhouse for the winter. How's the uh, transportation system at the Sims house, Jenny? In good shape? Sure. Mother and I are sharing. Sharing? Mm-hmm. Between us, we think we have plenty of mileage left in all four. All four tires? Uh-uh. Thumbs. <laughs> Thumbs, huh? Well, why don't you and I thumb through a chorus or two of that fine Mercer Kern ballad, Dearly Beloved. Okay. Could you do that? Tell me that it's true. Tell me you agree. I was meant for you. I was meant for you. You were meant for me. Dearly beloved, how clearly I see. Somewhere in heaven, you were fashioned for me. Angel eyes, do you? Angel voice, led me to you. And I know that nothing could save me. Fate gave me a sign. I know that I'll be yours come shower or shine. So I say, what they won't do to exploit a movie. What do you mean? Well, I mean the United States entry into North Africa. That's not movie exploitation, cop. That's our first big varsity try to smash the Axis. You mean it's just a coincidence that over 100,000 soldiers, sailors, and Marines are on the road to Morocco? (laughs) (laughs) Sort of a lucky break, cop, and one we hope is the first step toward giving La Belle France back to the Frenchman, which will be très bon. Oh, no, no, don't you mean très bel, sir? I mean très bon, which means very good. Well, I still like très bel, which means... You uh, call it très bon or très belle, Carpenter. Looks like we might have taken the fizz out of Vichy. May someday bring liberty, equality, and fraternity back to Paris. Yeah, I guess they'd still prefer American tourists to German tourists in Paris. Americans, after all, used to pay for what they took home. (laughs) (laughs) An interesting thought, Carp. 
Why don't you whip me up a couple of thousand words, single-spaced on that, while I get on with the Kraft Music Hall matters involving Ginny Sims, Edgar Buchanan, Edward Brophy, Mrs. Dolores Garcia Schober, the charioteers, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, the music maids in Hal, and a new tune by Burke and Van Heusen from Paramount's forthcoming Bob Hope, Dorothy Lamore picture, The Road to Morocco. It keeps coming up. Every day. Ain't got a dime to my name. What a terrible shame. Ho, hum. Ho, ho, hum. Just found a hole in my shoe and my stocking shows. Ho, hum. Ho, ho, hum. I know that when you're as free as a bird in a tree, life is a wonderful whim. Look at the crank with his dough in the bank. Don't you feel sorry for him? Rolling along at a loss, never gathering more. Ho, 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 ho. Buchanan, the actor, was known as Dr. Edgar Buchanan, dentist, with offices in the township of Altadena, California. Altadena is a suburb, not a relative of Pasadena. Today, however, Edgar Buchanan is under contract to Columbia Pictures, where he just finished a technicolor job called Desperados. Before you made the, uh, the big jump from dentistry to the cinema, Edgar, did you find it true that collecting a dentist bill is uh, like pulling teeth? Sometimes, Bing. I didn't mind so much when the patients didn't pay their bills for bridge work, but it did make me sore when they'd pass me in the street and sneer at me with my own teeth. <laughs> there. <laughs> Edgar, did you ever think of opening an office here in Hollywood, just a place where you could sort of limber up and keep in practice? I got that in mind right now, Pete. Huh? And I have a special method of treating Hollywood notables. The latest thing in dentistry. If I could only find an office. Well, Carp, what are we waiting for? Set Dr. Buchanan up in a Hollywood dental parlor. Oh, coming right up, Bing. Right this way to Buchanan's beautiful bicuspid bazaar. Are your uppers on their uppers? Do you have a gap in your trap? Well, don't yap. Close up your pan and see Dr. Buchanan. Your teeth will be so peachy, your friends will think you're Don Amici. <laughs> Try the new Buchanan method, dentistry to fit your personality. The office is open, Doctor. Dr. Carveny? Yes, Dr. Buchanan. Ken DeShaw Carpentry, the radio announcer, has an appointment this morning. Is everything ready? Yes, all set. It is now. Uh, will you come right in, Mr. Carpentry? Uh, thank you. Sit down. Radio announcer, eh? Mm-hmm. Are you troubled with dull, dingy tea? Do you keep your hand over your mouth when you smile? Do people talk behind your back? Are these your own teeth? Answer, true or false? Well, my God. The next voice you will hear will be the voice of Dr. Carboni. Take it away, Dr. Carboni. Open wide, Mr. Carpenter. Take a look, Dr. Buchanan. What do you see? I see ten uppers in the maxilla, ten lowers in the mandible, two incisors, two canines. It's a many a day since we've seen a step like this. By cuts, but it's a beautiful sight. <laughs> Ah, what a mouth. What a day. What a mouth. Oh, there's a big hole between the first and second molars. They're shifting to the right. Plug the hole. Here comes the drill. Oh! Offside. <laughs> I can't stand any more of this. Let me out of here. I want to go home. Next patient here, Dr. Crowley? Oh, yes. Mr. John Scott Trotter awaits in the old magazine room. Will you come in, Mr. Trotter? Sideways, please. <laughs> 
Is you all the dentist? He all is the dentist. Does you all extract teeth painlessly? Not always. The other day, I nearly dislocated my wrist. Now, Mr. Trotter, what is your occupation? I am a musician. Ah, a musician. Open your mouth while I take a look. What's that? Nothing at all. I was just tickling the eye. <laughs> I think we're going to have to staccato the diminuendo and fortissimo the allegro on this boy. <laughs> Mr. Trotter, we'll have to use the hammer on you. I thought you were going to take out that loose tooth. Oh, we're not going to take it out. We're going to pound it in tight. Easy now. Ready, Buchanan? Ready, Crowley. <laughs> da 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 There you are, Mr. Trotter. You'll soon feel just like another man. You can send the bill to that other man, too. Good day. <laughs> well, hmm. Our next victim is outside, Dr. Buchanan. I'll show it. Come right in, Curly. How do you do, sir? <laughs> Your name and occupation, please? I'm Eddie Brophy, and I'm a movie actor. Want to make something out of it? <laughs> mm, a movie actor, eh? Gangster type. We'll give you the chair. Oh, me, Pete, this killing me. Which Looks you... like an inside job. Okay, pal. Now get your mouth open before I drill you. But first, you got to promise me something. What? That you won't squeal. Are you all set, Doctor, for the gangster type movie actor extraction? Dr. Carvany, will you preview the molars, please? Open wide, Mr. Brophy. Light? Camera? I'll light his nose there a little, Dr. Carvany. Uh, the other side is the best profile. Uh, we'll get that later. More light on his beezer, I think, Doctor. Ready with the gas, please. Unroll him! Uh, better give me some more. I ain't out yet. Sorry, only allowed four gallons. You're only... <laughs> You're only entitled to an A card. I'm ready with the camera, Doctor. Are you ready to go? Wait a minute, Dr. Carvany. We can't go on with this extraction. This man is not a law-abiding citizen. What happened, Doc? Look, he's wearing 1941 plates. Hold up, boy! <laughs> Leaving the science of dentistry in a sad state indeed, as a result of Edgar Buchanan's visit to the hall, we turn to the charioteers and a rhythmic fantasy entitled Brother Bill. Me and Brother Bill went to hunt. Where'd you go, boy? Way up in Eastern Maine. Oh, the reason we went way up there, we thought we could catch some game. Oh. Me and Brother Bill went hunting. Oh. Way in the middle of the night, shot at something like a grizzly bear, and the dark on thing turned white. Woo! I dropped my gun, Mop! and the way I run, Brother Bill said, Boy, what's the matter with you? Had he known like me, he'd run some too. I ran so fast, they say, they couldn't catch me all day. The way I ran across that field, they couldn't catch me with an Bill got so excited. Comments is shooting at me. Heard those bullets sizzling, whistling through the trees. I ran right by my house. Didn't have time to knock. Ran into a good crap game and I didn't have time to stop. Ran into a gin mill. Thought I'd get a drink of gin. Oh, you didn't have a dime to pay for it. Oh, I had to start running again. Oh, ran so fast that night. He never touched the ground. Heard those birdies in the trees. Alabama bound. I'm going home. I'm all alone. Cause the bill said, boy, what's the matter with you? Had he known like me, he'd have run some too. I ran so fast, they say. Hey! They couldn't catch me all day. Now, the way I ran across that field, they couldn't catch me with an audible feel. They couldn't catch me. Jack, I was tan out. They couldn't catch me. Solidly went. Ooh. They couldn't catch me with an audible. is back. 1934, Adolf Hitler guns way to domination of Germany, and G-men smash United States crime wave. 1934, 81 vessels of the United States Grand Fleet visit New York Harbor for first time in four years, and Japan demands naval equality with the United States and Great Britain. 
1934. Mussolini's mighty army marches into Ethiopia, and thinking men in their clubs are saying... Say, any of you men ridden in a car with these new, uh, new action, knee action wheels? I've been thinking about getting me a new 1919-34 car, but I just can't find out what is knee action. Well, when a car knocks down a pedestrian, it, it kicks him, I think. <laughs> Well, 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 you look who's here. Harry. Knock, knock. Who's there? Kenneth. Kenneth who? Can it be possible your wife finally let you out of the house for an evening? <laughs> Will you stop with those exhausted knock, knock? I just said to her, I said, uh, I'd like to stay down down with the boys this evening. Yeah? Yeah? Well, she, she said I'd like a new dress. Well? Here I am. <laughs> well, aren't you here? What do we do? Anybody interested in seeing a picture? Here is my heart is around the corner. Well, who's in it? Kitty Carla. Not bad. Who else? Uh, Bing Crosby. I'll just go down to the library. <laughs> well, he's okay, but maybe I like him more than most people do. Maybe. The way I look at it is, what's a guy got that anybody else can't do? So all righty yodels. Could it be the trees that fill the breeze with rare and magic perfume? Is that hard? <laughs> 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 Oh, John, what you're filling the breeze with isn't rare and magic for you. <laughs> I suppose that guy Crosby can't sing. Love the neighbor, stand up and say how be you. You got to admit, Crosby does it better than that. Oh, well, any singer can get by singing those Ralph Ranger melodies, fellas. Awful pretty tunes, ain't they? Yeah, and I suppose that Crosby couldn't do it. Throw another log on the fire and smoke gets in your eyes. A little rangy, oh, that last right. one. A little rangy for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you ever see a dream walking? Or oh, Annie doesn't live here anymore. Those are good tunes, but getting back to Ralph Ranger, I think one of the best numbers he ever wrote was... Well, it goes like this. It's June... In January, because I'm in love, it always is spring in my heart with you in my arms. The snow is just white blossoms that fall from above, and here is the reason, my dear. Your magical charm The night is cold The trees are bare But I can feel The scent of roses in the air Oh, it's you January Because I'm in love But only because I'm in love With you I guess it's no secret that there's more than one airplane factory in Southern California. And women work in all of them. So just to be different, we went out and got ourselves a gal who works at Northrop Aircraft. They're the people who make the A-31 dive bombers. Her name is Mrs. Dolores Garcia Schober. She's been at Northrop since last July, working on cowling sub-assemblies. Just what machinery do you handle, Mrs. Schober? I handle the drill press, one-shot automatic hammer, and the squeeze riveter. Well, what's your reaction to a squeeze, Riveter? <laughs> oh, this, we'll get this boy, this Peoria boy. <laughs> There's a time and place for everything. <laughs> well, how'd you happen to get into an airplane, uh, into that kind of work, that factory work, Dolores? I've been doing precision work on optical goods, cameras, and range finders. But I wanted to do something that was a little more directly connected with the actual fighting machine. Well, any members of your family handling uh, those machines? My oldest son is an aviation cadet in the Army. My other son's an aviation machinist made third class on an airplane carrier. And my brother is a machinist made second class on a sub chaser. So you figured you'd also become a machinist mate. <laughs> furious, <laughs> Just what is your daily routine, Mrs. Schober? <laughs> I get up at 4.30 every morning, travel by trolley to Northrop, have a 20-minute breakfast, 
45-minute lunch, work eight hours and get home about 4.30 and have the rest of the day all to myself. <laughs> With the government urging every woman who can possibly do it to go into war work, thus free a young man for the Army, have you any suggestions to uh, give the gals? Yes, thing. The main thing is to get started. At Northrop, women, women totally unfamiliar with aircraft are placed on the payroll and then sent to machine shop school to learn factory routines. Did catch them, take them long to catch on? Oh, not very. Women's fingers are naturally more agile than men's, and they're perfect for precision work. Of course, there are a few fundamentals that have to be learned. Well, such as, uh... Never argue with a machine. Never try to fight a machine. Never try to make a machine do something it wasn't meant to do. And above all, learn to respect the work a machine can do and also the damage it can do if improperly used. Is that hard for a woman to learn? Oh, not if she's ever been married. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, single girls? Oh, well, once they've learned how to handle machines, husbands will be a cinch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best plug I've heard yet to get gals into airplane plants, and it was a pleasure, really a pleasure, having you with us this evening, Mrs. Shorba. The pleasure was mine, Dean. From Ginny Sims' forthcoming RKO picture, Seven Days Leave, we get one of the top tunes of the day. This was written by Private Frank Lesser. It's called Can't Get Out of This Mood. Ginny Sims herself to sing it. You're on, Ginny. Jenny, but here's...
while you and your group get your wind back, I'd like to take a second to say that our team just copped top trophy. Some years ago, the U.S. Navy set up an award to ships and men whose performance was outstanding. That was the beginning of what in this war has become a joint Army and Navy award for outstanding production of war essentials. The Army, Navy, E Award. Now, of course, food for our fighters is top rank in essentials, and it's now okay for release information that the first E Awards for food production went to three craft plants. The plants honored are in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Freeport, Illinois, and Decatur, Indiana. So congratulations to you craft men and women back there, and to the dairy farmers who are producing a lot of fine milk to make things the Army and Navy needs. One thing I know, you're not going to rest on your laurels. But Trotter's group seems to me have rested on theirs long enough, so we'll continue along prearranged lines with a favorite the song of the last war, Dear Old Palomar. Oh, how I miss you, dear old Palomar. Night and day I pray You're always mine Sweetheart, may God bless you Angel hands bless you Why? dreams rest you, dear old past of mine. Well, that's the business for this Thursday evening in the Old Craft Music Hall. Next Thursday, Papsy Maxie Rosenblum, Lloyd Nolan... Ella May Morris and Freddie Slack. These are, of course, over and above, beyond, and in addition to our regular group. And that town I was talking about is not Decatur, it's Decatur, Indiana. Bonsoir. When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day in Decatur, Indiana. Jenny Sims appeared on our program tonight through the courtesy of Philip Morris and Company Limited. The Kraft Music Hall comes to you from Hollywood's Radio City. <laughs>